Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to be showing you how I do this 1940s style hairstyle. Given that I get a lot of questions about how to do quick and easy hairstyles for those of you who are a little bit more time poor in the hairstyling department, I thought I'd share with you how I do this because it is one of my lazy day hairstyles and it is really quite simple. So enjoy! Alright, so the curls that I have in right now are actually from yesterday. I had done a bendy roller set and had brushed that out yesterday and then when I got home I simply brushed out all that curl, all of that set and because it was quite curly I figured I'd probably just be able to get away with sleeping on it overnight, not having to re-roll. I didn't wrap anything around it, I didn't tie it up in a hair tie because that would have given me like a dent at the back. So I just kept it out overnight just kind of free to do whatever um, and to try and keep some of the curl in and it's done pretty well. The good thing about this hairstyle that I'm going to show you is that it works well for really curly hair, smoother curls or even straight hair. When I'm traveling and I don't want to have to bother spending lots of time doing my hair um, I will a lot of the time just wear my hair quite straight but I'll do this hairstyle and pin it back to give it a little bit of a vintage feel. So what I'm going to do to start is just simply brush the curls through just to make sure that I don't have any big knots. Then I'm going to take my tail comb and I'm going to create the part. So I like to mine to be quite a deep part on the side. And normally I would do, with a regular sort of set and brush out, I would do quite a straight line like this. But with this hairstyle, because you have one side with a lot more hair than this side, I find it quite good to do a slightly more curved parting so that you can take a little bit of the hair from here into this side that doesn't have as much going on. So I go a little bit more curved. Like that. And then we're going to just take our sections of what we're going to be pinning back and it's very very similar to a victory roll section. I mean they basically are little baby victory rolls. So I've used my comb to create this section and you're wanting to make sure that it's starting far enough back, kind of coming towards the crown but not as far as the crown and you also want to have it behind the ear but not coming too far down behind the ear because it's just going to be a little bit harder to get it looking smooth I find. Um, what you don't want to do is have the parting say come too far down towards your temple like that for instance because you're just not going to have enough hair here to create that body and that volume. So this is pretty ideal and I'm going to clip this side out of the way and then I'm going to do the other side and try and just match that part at the top, bring it down. If you have really thick hair then for this side, because you do have you know so much more hair than the other side, then you might just need to kind of play around and try taking slightly like less wide sections, so maybe starting not quite so far back through here. But just play around with it. If it's just feeling like you've got too much hair in that section, then you might just need to try and use a little bit less. I'm very pedantic about having nice clean sections. It's a hang up of being a hairdresser and foiling. Alright, so this is this side. So it's pretty much the same as the other side, just obviously more hair because of the side part. And I'll clip this away. So these are our sections that we're going to be working with. Now, I'm just going to tuck that behind the ear so it's out of the way. Now all you're going to do is, like a victory roll, you're going to back comb, but you don't need quite as much back combing as a victory roll because you're not needing to get quite as much volume. So I have just taken that section in half vertically and I'm going to use my tail comb to just back comb the root area. My hair is a couple of days since being washed so back combing is really easy. If your hair is really clean or it's straight then you might need to spray that section with a bit of hairspray before back combing it. 
because you do need this to be good enough that when you put the comb in it is going to stay. And I'm not really packing this down as much as if, you know, maybe I was doing a really structured victory roll. So that's kind of how much backcombing I've got in there now. It's, it's really, it's, I would say medium backcombing, not intensive backcombing. And then I'm going to use my postiche brush to smooth the top layer over and back. I'm going to start by holding this kind of out on this angle. So it's like, I think of it as kind of 90 degrees to the curvature of the head. Um, and just continue to smooth. If you want to give it a bit of a spray, you can. I would stick to something with a light to medium hold, just so that you can still work with it if need be. That was the Kenra Design Spray. So I'm just smoothing it and then I am going to hold it about here so it's about halfway up and I'm going to twist the hair upwards so not down and around I'm twisting it up and over so up and over and it's not a full 360 twist it's really just enough for this sort of section to come up and over the other section so hold this in place with one hand and then with the other hand just sort of push this away, this little tail. If you need to clip it away then do that because you just don't want it sort of flopping around while you're inserting the comb. And then you're going to grab your comb and you're going to make sure that it's, the curve is matching the curve of your head. And I like to just try and position the comb so that the middle is going through that twisted part. And you need to just sort of be aware that you need to be sliding that comb in from the back of the section. If you try and slide it into the middle of that twist or of that roll, then it's just not going to work so well. So you really need to just look, try and look in the mirror and see where that section ends and then slide it in. And what ha tends to happen is... Once you slide the comb in, you're going to get a lot more volume than what it was initially. So I tend to do the twist, keep the volume sort of through the top and the sides to a minimum. And then once I've slid this comb in, which could be quite tight, but that means that you've got a lot of back combing and it's going to stay in place really well. So you just slide that in. And what's happened is it's pushed a little bit of extra volume into this section. And you can use your tail comb if need be to just sort of push any bits up that maybe aren't as voluminous as you would like. Now potentially depending on the size of your comb, you will get the ends of them sticking out a little bit. Now my combs that I'm using at the moment are on the longer side, so I definitely get that in the corners. But it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, if you don't like that, then I would try and find slightly smaller combs. And then for the other side, it's exactly the same. It can sometimes be a little bit harder, I find, to get the volume or the same amount of volume as the other side, simply because you don't have as much hair to work with. So you might need to do a little bit more back combing. And you also might need to just push, you know, push some pieces up with the end of your tail comb. So I've back combed and I've smoothed and now I am twisting upwards and over like that, keeping the volume a little bit to the minimum for now and sliding the comb in. And now I can just Pull some extra volume out. Now I'm going to use a slightly stronger hairspray to just smooth down all the frizz. Not that there's too much today, thanks to it being a few days after the wash. And then it's just about positioning all of the curls at the back. 
So as I said before, the curls at the back can be really curly and tight and that gives a really kind of cute and authentic feel to it. But it also works really well for smoother curls or looser curls. This is actually a hairstyle that I will resort to if my set has just turned to complete disaster and my curls aren't working very well because I feel like there's not as much sort of riding on the curls or being perfectly formed because it's not all sitting around your face. They're at the back, they can just kind of do whatever they want to do and it's not as much of a big deal as if you're trying to do like a full set and brush out. So yeah, if you see me with this hairstyle and loose curls, it might be because the set just did not play ball. So I'm just sort of brushing it through. I like this hairstyle with a little bit of frizz and fluff. I feel very sort of Veronica Lakey with it. And if you have layers like I do, then you'll find that these bits, which are from this section here, might sort of stick out a little bit. So what you may need to do is just make sure you, you know, give it a bit of a spray and smooth things down. But what you can also do is take a bobby pin and just sort of slide it underneath everything. I just like to weave it in and out of that section of hair and just slide it underneath the rest of the hair. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't see it, but what it does is it just keeps that bit down and tamed and not sort of springing up and creating these little ringlets. And that's it. It's so, so easy. I really love this hairstyle just because it is so easy. If you don't have any side combs and you can use bobby pins, I would recommend just making sure that they're really proper, strong hairdresser grip ones. I would also recommend that when you're putting them in, that you cross them over. So you create a little cross um, and that's just going to help keep that section of hair in place. And also just keep in mind that your back combing should be really, really good there because those bobby pins are going to need to stay in place well. Thank you very much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something make sure that you have a read through of the description box below because I'm going to be listing the products that I've used what you need to create this hairstyle and of course where my outfit is from be sure to subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on Facebook Instagram and my blog for more vintage inspired outfits hair makeup everything I'll see you next time